High Wind this week, a journey to the very heart of West Sussex to visit one of Britain's most historic places of learning. Nearly 90 years ago, pupils and teachers from a famous City of London school, dating back to medieval times, were on the move. They travelled by train to find new buildings, the lovely parkland setting near Horsham. And we've made the same journey too. And so we are arriving at the Country Railway Station, which was built in 1902, especially for the benefit of the religious Royal and Ancient Foundation of Christ's Hospital. But don't worry, there's not a doctor or nurse in sight. We're all going back to school. This may look awkward, but it is something over something. While we are here, we'll be meeting some of the 800 or so scholars, including many fine, young, up-and-coming musicians and singers. Here's something else I can tell you. The was the very first in Britain which was co-educational. But just as they were 400 years ago, the present generation at Christ Hospital is being encouraged as they grow up to give as well as they receive. It's an idea long cherished by this old institution proud of its past, and it encourages new hope as it looks to the future. Perhaps you recognize the same theme in some lovely words written by highway viewer Howard Barnes. An autumn song looks back to the joys of a long life, just as we remember the summer in the winter garden, where yet, even here, there's always the promise of life to come. The leaves of life have turned to gold, and yet, my friends, don't glow too old. I've still so many things to do. More lovely days to spend with you As autumn leaves go floating by And swallows fill the evening sky These precious things I've seen before starts to paint the leaves they say it's time to take your ease but as the leaves take wing my heart wants to sing the grass has never looked so green the sky so blue I've never seen For time like wine may fill the cup It tastes too good to drink right up Oh, my horizons look so new That long last walk is far from you a stage I've learned my part to stay forever young in A passing deed of pity is how the beginning of Christ's Hospital is described. Let me tell you how it happened. In 1552, the young King Edward VI heard a sermon preached by an old bishop, Nicholas Ridley, his fruitful and godly exhortation that the king be merciful to the poor. These words so moved Edward that he established three royal hospitals for the poor. One of them, Christ's, was to be for their education. He was helped by Richard Dobbs, Lord Mayor of London at the time. As a result, more than 260 boys and girls were to be rescued literally from the city's dunghills by Christmas in that same year of 1552. Today, Christ Hospital still likes to think of itself as an extraordinary school for the children of ordinary people. So money given by benefactors, as Edward VI did, still means that children from all backgrounds can be scholars here. Of the many traditions maintained here at Christ Hospital, Perhaps the most evident to the visitor is the distinctive school uniform. With me is Kieran Humphrey, who will tell us all about it. 
Um, the uniform consists of yellow stockings, breeches with more buttons on, and a full-length housey coat, which is, well, people may think that it keeps you warm in winter, but actually there's fair, fair few places to let drafts in. It's, <laughs> it's quite chilly. And in summer it does, it does get hot and a bit uncomfortable, but we are allowed to dispense with the coat um, in the hotter periods. When did it begin? Um, in 1553, when the school was founded, um, the uniform was, was taken up as the usual Puritan, Puritan clothing. Now, behind us is a big statue with four figures around it. Who are they? The statue is of our founder, Edward VI, and round the bottom are four famous old blues, former pupils of the school who have become great men of literature. Um, they're Middleton, Lamb, Coleridge and Lee Hunt. And as you can see, they're all wearing collars and cuffs and buttons like I am. But Lamb has not got the, the cuffs or the 14 buttons or the velvet collars, um, which means that he didn't become his um, full, didn't have his full status as a Grecian, which um, a pupil would receive when he could read and write Greek fluently. And he had a stammer, so therefore he couldn't um, read Greek fluently, so he wasn't allowed to have his buttons. It's a shame, which is, isn't it? Which is a shame. <laughs> now, just from this one example, can we tell where it came from? There seems to be something going on at Christ's Hospital every hour of the day and night. And although some of it is very familiar, there's quite a lot too that isn't for those of us whose school days are in a rather dim and distant past. those who like maths lessons. Shame on you. I must be the worst maths pupil in the history of the school I attended in Swansea. So if you like me, you should listen to this, because I've come here to meet a very special person, a very special master. He's David McLean, and he's a master of the Royal Mathematical School. So what we've got to do is split that up into two separate fractions. Oh, is that right? <laughs> it is indeed. <laughs> it's a closed book to me, Matt. Oh, dear. David, why, why is it called the Royal Mathematical School? And it came about largely through the efforts of Samuel Pepys, who was Secretary of the Admiralty at the time. King Charles II and a lot of other people were very perturbed about what they'd seen in the Dutch Wars, because it had revealed an alarming scarcity of competent naval officers. So what happened was that Samuel suggested to Charles that he, the King, should form a school of 40 pupils who would be educated in mathematics, with particular emphasis in navigation. So on the 19th of August, 1673, the Royal Mathematical School was founded under Royal Charter. And we have a number of pupils here, of course, at the moment. And they all wear a badge on their left shoulder, which shows a Christ Hospital boy being patted on the head by arithmetic, <laughs> astronomy, and commerce. Now, I've got to admit, I found maths very difficult when I was a schoolboy. Do children still find maths difficult? One of the difficulties with mathematics really is that it's based on a, the real foundation. And if your foundations are weak, yes. then it gets very difficult as you get higher up the school. And I think some children try to run before they can walk. From the earliest days, scholars at Christ Hospital were given not just lodging and learning, but meat and drink and officers to attend upon them. Today's catering is on a huge scale. And just before half past one is a time to see just how school food has improved in recent times. And now, before everyone sits down to eat, here's a most extraordinary and unique musical appetizer. It's a great school tradition. So, with the help of little Sousa, shall we go in for lunch? After you, Martin. Fun for left quick march.
Surely nobody who's been at Christ Hospital will forget the lunch parade. The school's full military band, which each year marches at the head of the Lord Mayor's procession in the City of London, here leads the entire school as they march behind their house banners into the dining hall. A key member of the chaplaincy team at Christ Hospital is Sheila Banyard. I'm one of a team of three, and as well as taking care of chapel services and confirmation preparation and leading all kinds of religious activities, we also all teach in the school. We teach religious studies, and I teach some history as well. We're obviously a religious foundation and so religion has always been important in the school. And we see it as, a, I think, a thread running through the sort of fabric of the school life. But there's a very wide variety of services, some traditional, some informal, some very well attended, some where maybe there's only just a handful of children and adults to come. And then in the boarding houses, we have, uh, again, voluntary, services of communion say, where the boys and girls come along time. in a very relaxed family sort of atmosphere. Hallowed be thy name. Everybody's at different stages in their religious life and I think one of the things we try to do here is to explore uh, and help people to explore for themselves their religious commitment and their interest in God and Christianity. All down the centuries, Christians have gathered at nightfall for the ancient office of Compline. This is one of the newer traditions of Christ's Hospital, a gentle and beautiful experience, just for those who want to come along to the school's lovely chapel.
Hearing that prayer and looking around the chapel at some wonderful paintings by Frank Brangwyn brings to mind a hymn of thanksgiving by the great German writer Martin Brinkhardt, who wrote these words not long after the foundation of Christ's Hospital. Every scholar at Christ's Hospital is familiar with the singing of Christian hymns in the chapel. But for the man who is coaching the first 11 hockey team, this could easily have been a little puzzling. Because Ajaz Karim is a Muslim. And although he's now a senior member of the sports staff, he's also an old boy of the school. The school itself, they didn't change me at all. Uh, they gave me the privilege uh, of being uh, a, myself, a Muslim, because my parents gave me that. And they felt that they could do anything to help, like if we had pork for lunch or say bacon in the morning i was given special food so a lot of boys felt they wanted to become muslims as well did you attend school chapel when you were here yes i was given a choice uh, by the school to miss the school chapel or attend my, i spoke to my parents about uh, going to the school chapel and they felt that i should go uh, because it wasn't changing me, it wasn't changing my religion, and I could go in and be myself and pray in my own words. Good. Did you learn anything from it? Yes, uh, it was getting together, and also it made you think of your religion uh, and to share your religion, rather than uh, thinking about being Muslim and nothing else. I think you have to respect other religions too. And uh, the school allowed me to do that. That's great, isn't it? Yes, yes. Now, you left here and you went away to study being a sportsmaster. Yes. But you came back here. How did that come about? There's something about the school, the uniqueness. Uh, I feel, I, I feel that now, that I owe the school a lot. They gave me education, they gave me the confidence I have now, and my success really depends, depends uh, on the school. Good save. Take a shot. Close to the school playing fields is a magnificent modern building housing the Christ Hospital Art Centre. International stars come here, performing for the public as well as for the school. But here are some scholars who can match the professionals. The Christ Hospital show band, under the eagle eye of their conductor, David Elliott, perform for us now the very own interpretation of Neil Heffy's Little Darling.
If you thought that only boys would have been found in a wood workshop, then you're in for a big surprise when you come to this school. Here we are in the well-equipped Craft Design and Technology Centre, where Zoe Hookins is making a special clock for a mother who is blind. Zoe, tell us about the clock. Well, instead of having numbers, it has braille on it, braille dots. How long have you been blind then, Marianne? Oh, since I was a child. I was, yeah. I was um, educated as a blind child, so mm. of course it isn't a problem, really. No. Never has been a problem. And the children aren't really bothered about whether I'm blind or otherwise. That's really a <laughs> difference to them. Yeah. So, but w w when your husband died, of course, that presented a lot of problems, didn't it? Yes. I mean, obviously, it made life a little bit harder. Mm. And it's natural to graduate towards somebody who is strong as though he's a strong yeah. personality. And this is obviously one of the reasons why I felt that it just isn't fair to depend on a child. I felt that she ought to go somewhere that, um, where she would be able to benefit from everything in life. Yeah. And Christ Hospital seemed to offer that and um, it develops the whole person. And certainly I've seen a tremendous change in her in the last year. And you have an, uh, another child ready to come here too, I have a you? younger child, a little boy, and he's hoping to come here if he passes the exam. So he's working very hard at the moment. <laughs> You're looking forward to it, is he? I think so, yes. I think he's very keen. <laughs> The first scholars at Christ's Hospital were encouraged to read Latin and be musical. Perhaps they'd be surprised to hear Andrew Gordon's rock group, because they prefer their own style of music to the classics. Richard Poulton is the latest in a long line of distinguished men to serve as headmaster of Christ's Hospital. How do you feel when you first came to Amos School, you come as headmaster? How do you feel? It was a very frightening experience. Um, I can remember my first assembly having to go in and speak to 850 children and 90 staff looking very quizzically at me. And I spoke perhaps slightly solemnly about how I would expect them to greet me and I would greet them and I would use their names if I knew them and I would ask if I didn't and so on. And I actually needn't have bothered because on my first full day here, a little lad came up to me in the cloisters and said, Watcher, sure, how's it going? <laughs> now, what do you hope to give the pupils when they're here? Well, first and foremost, I think a sense of community, a sense of belonging. This is a great tradition and one is very proud of being in the same uniform that the children have been in for the last 400 plus years. And they belong to Christ's Hospital and always will do so. But after that, one wants to give them a good academic education to the best of their ability, give them a, a good sense of self-discipline and prepare them for a world which is changing much faster than ever the world that, that you and I have lived in. I want to prepare children for not the day when they leave school, but 10 years hence. I want to be able to know, is this child going to be a good employer or employee? Uh, is he or she going to have a good, loving relationship? Is it going to be contributing to the community? And so as each child leaves, he or she is given a Bible like this. And at a leaving service, I say to all the leavers, and the charge is printed inside the Bible, I charge you never to forget the great benefits that you've received at this place. And in time to come, according to your means, to do all that you can to enable others to share the same advantage. And may the good name of Christ's Hospital go with you wherever you go.
after hearing the whole school sing their foundation hymn with words and music by an old boy, we come to the end of our visit to Christ's Hospital. Now, coming to a school like this, although vastly different, inevitably reminds me of my own school days. Yet, looking back at all those years, as I said in the song, all my horizons still look so new. Next week, Highway goes back home to Carmarthen in South Wales. I'll see you then. <laughs>